actually, you know, just really still kind of day to day with Caleb. We didn't know for sure uh, about his availability for the game until pregame warm up. <clears throat> he was dressed out. He just didn't feel, you know, like himself. Didn't feel like he could go. And and uh, you know, obviously, he was very limited in practice last week. He was out there for the majority of the walkthroughs and all that. Uh, so you know, we'll just again, it's a day to day approach with him. Uh, you know, we expect to have Will Jones back. Um, you know, obviously, Ty did a great job in his first start the other day. So. Uh, you know, obviously, his confidence level has really, um, you know, gone up, and, and rightfully so, because he had an awful good game there for his first start. So uh, we'll just take a day to day, you know, but those other guys, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, Ty and, and Will and Donnie, uh, those guys will be ready to go. You know, you mentioned Antonio. Uh, he went down, and we certainly uh, are expecting to have uh, Antonio uh, you know, available to play this week. You know, it's still early in the week here. We, you know, today is their day off, so we'll see, you know, how he's how he progresses here with treatment and all that stuff. But we we expect here on Monday, um, you know, to have Antonio available for this week. And you know, obviously, you know, Anthony uh, is someone who's leading you all in sacks uh, at this point in the season. I know, uh, you know, moving Tyler to being the main defensive coordinator, getting after the quarterback was, you know, a huge uh, you know point of focus for you all to see Anthony doing as well as he is, is that just Anthony being that talented? Is it the scheme that Tyler's putting in just being that effective? Is it a combination of the two? How do you see those things uh, marrying together? There's no question it's a combination of both. You know, when we, uh, when, when Anthony became available, you know, as a graduate transfer and, and uh, Coach Stockton and the defensive staff did a great job of, um, you know, evaluating his skill set and, and targeting him as a guy that we wanted to go after and try to, uh, to make sure he knew how big of a part he could be here for us at Ball State and primarily on the defense. And, you know, Coach Stockton's done a great job of putting him in a position to have success. And, you know, a lot of it, too, when you talk about late in the games and you think about, you know, the, the fumble that he caused there late in the game at Miami and then the fumble that he caused here, uh, you know, this one bounced uh, our way and it bounced into the hands of our guys. So, you know, that's him, you know, in a big time situation, uh, you know, big time players make big time plays. We've all heard that. And, you know, Anthony won his one on one matchup and, 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 and he delivered the game winning play. And so Christian was there uh, to recover the fumble. But, you know, Anthony has, has been a great addition to our program. And, you know, I know we've said many times before that he's kind of like a Swiss Army knife and, and uh, Coach Stockton has done a tremendous job of utilizing his skill set and, um, you know, Coach, Coach Conley's done a great job of, of working with him on a day-to-day -day basis there. So it's, it's, he's been a great addition and, you know, certainly loved uh, being able to, to watch his tape and evaluate it uh, back when he was at Rice and he's been a great addition for us. You mentioned him as a, as a Swift Army Knight there. I, in what ways does he exemplify that uh, uh, description to you? Yeah, because he's such a powerful guy, you know, whether, you know, you don't typically look at him and think he's, an, you know, he's not a guy that you're looking at saying, okay, he's a six four, you know, long pass rusher off the edge. He's a guy that's got deceptive strength. You don't realize how strong he is and how explosive he is off the ball until you see it every single day in practice. Certainly when you saw his tape from Rice and you saw that uh, show up on tape, but then you see him every day and, and the guys that he's going against, I know what kind of numbers they put up in the weight room. I've seen him, you know, day in, day out. And, and Anthony's one of those guys that he's, he's, in, he's got unbelievable strength for a guy that, you know, might not be overly tall in terms of stature, but he's got incredible strength and he uses that to his advantage. And, uh, and he wins against some guys, you know, tackles, uh, in our conference that might have uh, an advantage in terms of length, but he wins with his power and his explosiveness. And so, um, and, he, and, and he shows that on tape. And so when you prepare as an opponent and you see that, uh, you know that, uh, you know, he can win in different ways. And that's the part, you know, when I refer to him as a Swiss Army knife, those are, those are the things you kind of, re that I refer to is that he can win in different ways. It's not just one way uh, that he can win. And, uh, you know, he does a good job of finishing the deal and finishing the rush. And, you know, he's got a knack, uh, you know, for getting the ball out and, um, and making a play when we need it the most. And, and last question um, that I got for you, just has he any at all surprised you since he's gotten to campus? You know, considering he's a grad transfer to a new program amid a pandemic, all the challenges that brings, uh, you know, I know he's in the only grad transfer doing well, Chris is as well, but just uh, is, is he surprised you anyway? Or from what you all saw on film of him coming out of Rice, this is what you expected? No, I think, you know, we're having an opportunity to visit with him during our recruitment of him, you know, on the phone or, or on Zoom, he's a very polished young man. And so obviously when you're talking about, you know, being a grad transfer, you've been through 
a lot of the growing pains that you go through as a freshman or a sophomore or junior to get yourself, you know, as a finished product. And so you were all always working on a daily basis to improve and get better. But, you know, when you saw Anthony take the practice field and how hard he works uh, and how important it is to him, uh, you know, on a daily basis, that's the part that you appreciate. And when you bring a young man in here like that, that, you know, as a grad transfer and he's polished and he's been through those growing pains. Uh, that was a part that was great to see and, and uh, everything that uh, we could have asked of him coming in here, just about being a great teammate, being, you know, as much as you possibly can when you come in as a grad transfer, being a leader and being a great mentor for young players. Uh, and he's done it day in, day out in practice. You see that from him. He's hard to block in practice on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, when, 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 you know, we were able to see those things early when I guess training camp, if it's called training camp, we were able to see those things early and, and, uh, you know, he's just done a great job and he's been somebody that, you know, uh, he's going to be the same guy week in, week out and be consistent. And, you know, I don't think I've ever really said, I've been surprised. I've just been, you know, what we expected to see from Anthony, we were able to see on the practice field and it's carried over to the game. Thanks Mike. Thank you. Mike, I got a couple for you, um, if you can hear me. Um, gotcha. Defensively, uh, what was different in your eyes about the way you guys played on Saturday? Just when you look numbers-wise, I mean, the, what you did to them rushing, um, I think you had like half your season sacks on Saturday. Just was there a difference in the way the guys played or attacked or a fire in their eyes or what stood out to you? They're just continuing to grow and get better, you know, and get more comfortable with – you know, they all, majority of the guys, you know, have been around Coach Stockton before, uh, but you're growing. There's still adjustments, there's still tweaks, there's different things that he's brought to the table in his role right now than he did a year ago. And so, you know, you can see the comfort level and guys just getting more confident, more comfortable uh, with what we're doing from a scheme standpoint. And you, you're seeing that confidence come out on the football field and they truly believe. And, and, you know, obviously for 54 minutes the other day, you talk about playing championship caliber defense and you know that's a that's a good football to, a, a good Toledo football team that's got a lot of weapons offensively but got good balance they've been able to throw it they've been able to run it you know that's that's something that they've done week in week out year in year out and so for to be able to do what we were able to do uh, on Saturday is impressive but I think that's just a testament to our players to, uh, to the defensive staff to coach Stockton and, and all of our defensive players for just continuing uh, to learn and to buy in uh, you know, to the scheme and, and, and letting it go to work. And that's what happened on Saturday is, uh, and it was, it was, uh, it was fun to watch. And then when we needed, you know, when there was a sudden change or we had an interception or we got stopped on downs or we missed a field goal, the defense came right back. I mean, that, that interception on the screenplay, you know, that was right before the half. And, you know, those guys did an unbelievable, defense did an unbelievable job of holding them to a field goal right there. And really, you know, that still gave us a lot of momentum and a lot of uh, juice going into halftime there. And, and uh, you know, I just every time they delivered the interception by Bryce, that play was huge as far as the momentum shift to the game. And then two plays later, we were able to score a touchdown. So I think just a complimentary piece of it between the offense, defense, special teams, playing good complimentary football uh, was great to see. And I, I just, you know, our guys, you see the confidence growing every day and that, you know, the leadership on the defensive side of the ball. We've got a lot of guys that have played in a lot of games here. And, um, you know, it's good to see their hard work pay off. Uh, Devin Gardner said on Saturday that he thought Bryce kind of baited Eli Peters into throwing that pick. Um, can you kind of give me the breakdown from your eyes of, of what Bryce did on that play that maybe set him up to make the interception? Yeah, a lot of times when you're a safety and you turn your shoulders, you're going to give the QB a false read. He's expecting one thing when his shoulders get turned, and then all of a sudden Bryce uh, played right back into that thing and, and made a great play. And so, you know, that's a that's a credit to Bryce. He works so hard and he spends so much time in the meeting room. You know, he is like a coach on the field and he understands what offenses are trying to do to you from a concept standpoint. You know, he studies route combinations. He studies, you know, our opponent's tendencies. He studies, you know, what, you know, what are their bread and butter? What do they like to do? And so that's a credit to him, uh, you know, because obviously, um, you know, he's played as many games as anybody uh, in our program right now and, and his hard work and, you know, his mental toughness and, and the adversity that he's been through with some of the injuries that he's faced. It's, it's great to see that uh, pay off for him. But Bryce is, he's like a quarterback on the back end and he knows what, uh, you know, what offenses are trying to do to attack us. 
and the last thing for me right now is just uh you know these are games last year that that didn't go your way down the back stretch where the last two three minutes um nothing broke your way whereas this year um you know eastern michigan you guys get the touchdown you guys get the stop obviously toledo plays out the way it plays out um other than just like experience and having been there before is is there a different like is there a is there a gene that's kicked in um or or something about this group that finishes games or or is able to close out those last couple of minutes that stood uh, stood out to you no, I just think it's obviously recognizing that that was a weakness for us a year ago. We went into the off season saying, hey, man, when we had an opportunity to deliver in those close games, we didn't get that done. We tried to put ourselves as a team and as a program into those situations in practice and training camp. We tried to practice those end of the game. You know, a lot of two minute work, a lot of end of game drives where, you know, either the defense was up and they were defending, you know, a two point lead or the offense was down and offense needed to score. So we tried to put ourselves in those scenarios the best that you possibly can in training camp when you're going against each other. And, and sometimes we went live because that was the only true way to, to, to feel like, okay, you know, that would have been a tackle or that would not have been a tackle. He would have got out of bounds or he would not have gotten out of bounds. So just trying to put ourselves in those situations in practice to make sure that we gave it the proper attention and uh, it's our guys believing it's our guys staying positive and our guys knowing that you know it's up to us when we get into those critical moments or those late game situations and you know we've been you know last year was the first time we were in some of those you know some of those uh, previous years unfortunately we just weren't where we needed to be uh, in terms of narrowing the gap but last year was the first year uh, we were in some close games like that and so we had that close game experience and now in order to take the next step we got to emphasize it uh, over and over in practice, and and uh, and we were able to do that. And our guys uh, took those practice those periods in practice when we had them very serious, uh, very game like. And uh, you know, it's it's good to see uh, that hard work by our players and our young men paying off. Hey, uh, Anthony. I guess I'll uh, I'll start it off here. Um, but I believe you talked about this with Joel uh, before um, for a BSU thing. But just from your perspective, why was Ball State the the place you wanted to go? Why did you want to grab transfers? How did this whole process come together for you? Yeah, um, it's pretty much simple. Uh, I just felt that everyone was on the same page. You know, um, you can't say that for every uh, uh, schools. You know, when you're getting recruited. Um, the way that the coaches talk to me on the phone and introduce themselves and let me know their vision for the program. You know, it's something that really resonated with me because the most important thing was that I was comfortable, you know, um, especially coming here and hearing about the group of guys that they have here and actually being here and getting to meet the guys. It's a, it's a hungry team. You know, we're a hungry team. Everyone is bought in. Um, we're not pulling anybody with us. You know, everyone is all locked in. We're all focused on the same mission and, that's really what resonated with me in the process. And it's what keeps me going as well. Mm -hmm. and, and so how did you find Ball State then? I guess being, you know, going to high school in Texas, going to college in Texas, now you're in Muncie, Indiana. I guess, how did that all come together, you know, from, from your eyes? And, and why does, you know, Muncie a place that you felt, you know, comfortable uh, spending the rest of your college career? No, um, I just know of, uh, from my old institution I was at, you know, the some of the coaches I was with, um, they have ties here at Ball State, uh, whether that was their brothers that worked here, uh, you know. Um, so I really feel like it was just the the connections between the people of the staff here, uh, from both staffs, you know. Also, was I would say it was also a good cue for me um, to just consider coming to Ball State, knowing that um, I was with a great staff before and coming here and knowing that they have ties here must mean a good thing as well. So I had to consider it, you know. Um, and so that was really what stuck out with me was just the family ties and um, it was what really helped me with the process. And, and when you chose Ball State, what did you hope in, in, that, in that decision that, you know, Ball State would bring you? I guess, was it a potential like leaping board for what you want to do next or just a, a comfortable place to end your college career? Just what were you thinking when you chose Ball State in terms of what's next as you look ahead to your future? You know, I was just, I just wanted to, um, be part of a program that was just hungry, part of a program that um, at the same time I wanted to step out of my comfort zone and, you know, be in a new environment, you know, challenging myself to be able to to get out of my comfort zone and be able to, you know, 
be able to move forward, you know, especially knowing that I'm pretty much away from my family, away from a lot of people. And at the same time, be part of a team that wants to do something special. You know, there's something special going on here. I wanted to be a part of that, you know, and, and we're putting it on display, you know. So um, that was pretty much the biggest thing, just being able to be a, a, around the staff, a group of guys who are giving their their best every day to, to, to attain their goals that we all set for it. So that's what really st sticks with me. And, you know, obviously uh, this defense, you know, coming into this year wanted to be much more focused on getting to the quarterback. Obviously you've been a huge part of that so far this year. I guess yeah. just from your perspective, knowing that that was a big focus for this defense, how does it feel to be a key reason why that's actually coming to fruition and isn't just, you know, talk? You know, um, you know, it's just, it's my job at the end of the day. It's what I have to do. So I'm going to try to, you know, do it in my best, you know, especially in times where we need to make a play. You know, I want to be someone who, that this team can rely on, you know, I want to, and that's how everybody feels on this team. You know, we all want to step up to the plate. We all want to do what it is that we can do to the best of our ability, no matter where we're at, you know. So I'm just fortunate enough to even have this opportunity to, you know, to be on this defense and to to do the things that I do with the with the great group of guys. Has it been you know hard at all to to make this transition uh, to a new part of the country, uh, a new program amid a pandemic, or have the guys you know been able to really ease that transition for you? It has. It wasn't hard at all. You know, even amongst everything that's been happening, because I'm just the kind of guy that likes to you know focus on the present moment. Um, like I said, I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to step out of my comfort zone, you know, you know, being someone who loves Texas, you know, um, I, it's still, you know, I feel like there are times where uh, we need to step out of our comfort zone, you know, and that's exactly what I did. Um, and it turned out just fine. You know, you just got to expect the best out of things. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, it's, it's even icing on the cake when you come over to a place like Muncie and Indiana here at Ball State where, you know, there's a group, great group of guys. It's a family here. It's a brotherhood here, along with the great coaching staff who, who, who are who really knows what they're doing in terms of just bringing the guys together and to move forward to a plan to just become the best team that we can be, and win a championship. And and last question um, that I got for you, and then I think I can throw over to Joel here. Uh, just when you when you look at, you know, Toledo, you, you have the force fumble uh, that really, you know, seals the game for you all. Is that a moment where you think, like, this is this is me showing the capability that I have on the field? Or are there other moments, maybe they're in practice that have already happened before the, maybe the season even started, that you feel like you really showed, like, this is a player you are to this team? You know, I, I just want to show that, um, you know, that I want to, that I can contribute to this defense. I want to show that, you um, that I can, that I could do what I can do, what I, I could do what I can at a high level, you know, especially being with a group of guys that believe in me, you know, it all starts with me personally believing in myself and then uh, also believe in the guys around me and, and knowing that, uh, that they do believe in me and, you know, it just sort of rubs off on everybody. So, I mean, my biggest thing is just, just doing what I can, you know, um, at the task at hand, just being able to execute when needed and being able to just contribute as much as I can to this team. Cause that's, that's just what it comes down to at the end of the day, just doing playing at a high level and being and playing at your best and doing the best that you can. Thank you. Anthony, this is a cliche question for a Texas guy. Um, have you seen snow before? <laughs> I see the snow outside today and it's the first time I've seen, I, like, I can only tell you I've seen I haven't even seen snow coming down the sky like I did today. So it's definitely a new <laughs> process for me. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of guys told me, um, you know, get ready for this, you know, it's something that you're going to have to adjust to. And, and, and they were right. <laughs> They're definitely right. Okay, yeah. are, you, uh, are you curious about what it might be to play in if you're going up to Michigan? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even, 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 even practicing, you know, um, you know, it's, it's something I obviously never, I never, been in that sort of situation so it's going to be really interesting to see <laughs> moving forward especially when the weather starts to really drop so we'll see how that goes <laughs> I, I i appreciate the the openness to being most people would be like i don't want to i don't want that at all um, yeah. <laughs> um for you uh coach was talking about just you're stronger than you necessarily look like you're mm -hmm. you're, you're deceptively strong um 
what are your numbers in the weight room if you know like what what kind of weight do you throw around uh i mean i feel i'm pretty pretty strong guy in the weight room um, i feel like uh i'm not weak <laughs> uh you know you, like you catch guys by surprise that are bigger than you when you hit them most definitely yeah i feel like they um you know i try to sort of set the tone early um you know um i feel like i definitely do catch some of them by surprise um but the end of the day you got to know what's coming you know so you just got to be prepared for anything um what's it like for you if you like if you're up against a longer tackle um what's the the strategy for beating a guy that's maybe got a little bit more length than you being able to use the attributes that, that you have that are your strengths i mean you just got to know your opponent you got to know how you know you got to know how they move how they play um that's all seen in film you got to see what their weaknesses are so I mean, I just sort of just, I just got to know the, the how the guy across from me plays. You know, just watching it on film, being able to take notes and see how they play, and just trying to find ways to to counter that is really what it comes down to at the end of the day. So, you've had two, uh, you've had two really big strip sacks at two really big moments in games this year. Um, can you break down what it's like in that moment? And hey, like defense needs a big play. Um, what the vibe is, what the feeling is that's different in that situation versus second and three in the second quarter? Uh, I mean, it, the times like that just calls for, you know, big plays. Um, times like that just calls for, you know, buckling down and um, showing your teammates how much you love them, you know. And um, uh, I really feel like that's what really motivates me to, you know, just just play like I do and to play my best ability despite whatever – despite whatever negative actions or words that are said about me, you know, just at the end of the day, I got my brothers. It's who I do it for. I got this team. It's who I do it for. And that's all that matters at the end of the day, despite outside uh, sources or anything like that. So, um, Tell me about the belt. The belt, yeah. It's, it's currently uh, dangling in my locker right now. Um, <laughs> I, I have it for the week, so um, – it, it's a it's a great reminder to show you know just you just got to keep you know keep fighting you know keep swinging you know no matter how deep in the water we are you just got to keep going so um i like that i like that build i like it a lot how did it get introduced to you guys like did coach stockton show it to you for like what was the story behind it when they introduced it to you uh pretty much, i mean it's just big time plays called you know you know you take you get the belt for the week you have it for the week so um, that's that's what I heard when I got it uh, after the game. So that's as much as I know about the belt right now. So, um, Coach had talked about the strides you guys have made defensively. Um, you know, like I think you guys had half of your season sack total on Saturday, um, what you were able to do shutting down Toledo's run game. Um, and he talked about kind of how you guys have bought in as the year has gone on and as you've gotten acclimated. Um, especially for you being brand new to the program. Um, I feel like there's a lot of talk about it's a pandemic. It's a different year. There wasn't really fall camp. You're doing a lot of things on zoom. Obviously it's a new defensive system and a new defensive coordinator. Um, what in your eyes has that transition process been like and, and how have you noticed comfortability of guys um, with what you're doing on defense change as the weeks have gone by to get to where you are now? Well, I mean, to sort of just sum it up, you know, with everything going on and us having to play in such a condensed amount of time and the way that we're playing just goes to show how bought in we are. It goes to show how much we care about each other here. It goes to show how much we're doing the best that we can. It goes to show how much we're just locked in in general, you know. Um, and I really feel like that alone is what translates into how we're how we're playing, you know, day in and day out, you know, through practice, through the meet, the Zoom meetings, you know, a short amount of time. But, you know, we, we continue to stay in the present moment, you know, control what we can't control. And like I said, you know, when, when more than one head gets together to achieve one goal, you know, it turns out to be more beautiful than you think. And that's what's happening here. Is there a difference you feel in, in just everybody's grasp on what you guys are trying to do? Like, do you, is there a comfortability you feel across the board in week four and week five um, that's different than what there was, um, you know, back in October? I mean, 
I just pretty much, I'm just, like I said, we're just staying in the present moment, just comfortability. I mean, we're, there's so much more that we can improve on, you know, um, at the end of the day. So that's just what we're going to continue to do, you know, try to just maximize our opportunities, maximize our abilities in such a short amount of time. That's, that's just, that's, that's what we got to do. And then that's what we're doing. What's uh, what's top of the list to improve on? What, what can still get better in your eyes? Uh, there's a, uh, there's a lot of things that could get better, you know, no matter how good you are, I personally feel like there's room for improvement, you know, period. Um, I feel like you, there's, there's always something to work on, you know. There's a lot of things you got to work on at the end of the day, no matter how good you are. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Anthony, sorry, I had, I had one more thing. Uh, sorry, just a more thing. The way you talk about team sort of leads me to, to want to ask this question, I guess. Where does your, your love of just that, that team, that locker room connection come from? Is it something that was just really meaningful to you growing up uh, in high school or, or in college? Or just where, where does that – sort of just love the way you talk about it you're sort of like where does that come from reminds me of high school you know um you know being a, around a group of guys that you just grew up with your whole life you know you just go out friday night lights and play with your brothers you know and then knowing everything is a lot more genuine you know and i really remember you know getting together with the boys and you know just the love we have for each other you know outside of football you know that alone translates into how successful we were, you know, back in high school. So, you know, whenever I, whenever I'm here at Ball State, you know, I'm starting getting that same vibe like I did at high school. You know, it's a beautiful thing knowing that when you have a guy, guys, you know, all around you that are, you know, that love you, you know, that want to play as as hard as they can for you, you know, to achieve the same goal. You know, you got to do the same. You got to reciprocate that energy. You know, so. That's, that's how I feel about it at the end of the day. It just reminds me of those high school days. And, you know, that's the reason why I got to continue to go hard. It's the reason why this team has to continue to do what we're doing.